I wanted to do a continuation of my Jane Davenport series of swatching out and color wheeling the different watercolor sets that I have from her. Now a couple of these I acquired from Blitzy and I believe this one I got at Michael's recently on sale. But if you're needing to make a decision of which one would you purchase if you had to choose one, that's the purpose of the, the, these next three videos is to show you what varieties of colors you can get if you only purchased one set. This video is going to focus on the newest palette, which is this one right here. This one is called the Glitz C palette. This one has a good variety for mixing because as you can see, it has a yellow, let me pull out my swatch here. It has a bright yellow, it has a red, and it has two different types of blues. There's a darker blue and a little bit of a lighter blue. So it'll really be interesting to see uh, what variety of colors we can get out of this particular set. The other nice thing with Jane Davenport's collection is that she gives you the professional information. So for example, these are based off of professional watercolor set half pans. So you can purchase additional half pans, these little plastic squares, off of any standard artist website. And they'll fit in here. You can add up to another six colors down the center of this. And if you don't want to duplicate colors, you can check with her chart of how those um, colors measure up. Let me show you what I mean. But this is the color chart that's provided on her website. On that website, she shows you the rating for light fastness. Um, that some of these, a lot of these are two, but then a lot of these are ranked at three. Also, she shows you the actual pigment mixtures that she's using in each one of these. So if you type in the PB29 and PB27 mix, you'll be able to see what other uh, professional or artist grade watercolors are out there from other brands that have that same mixture. And you can either buy her refill online on her website shop. I think it's like $3.47. she has hers itemized on her website and then you can also choose if you want to buy a slightly different shade from another manufacturer that might have a slightly different shade or combination with the professional color pigments um, she actually gives you the pigment names for all of her sets so that's how you can prevent having a lot of duplicates among your watercolor sets she also gives you some handy tools in her collection. I believe this particular color wheel stencil came in a paint palette that I bought, uh, a paint set. I think it was, um, it has primary colors, but it's really nice because this stencil can be used to swatch out your water watercolors as well. She also has a paper pad. And when I first saw this, I was like, hmm, would I use that many sheets? It's 50 sheets. Well, what's really neat about it is you can really mix and play with a lot of those to see what flesh tone would be best for a face or for hair. And then she also has the standard color wheels. So you can cut these out and put them on your swatch page and figure out what you want to do with those as well. So those are some really nice color wheel basic options. If you have no idea where to start with a color wheel, then you can go to Walmart and they have this basic color wheel there. Any brand, there's a lot of brands, the name may be different here, including Jane Davenport's, but they're all the same color wheel. It just has a different name right here. And it's two-sided, so it helps you figure out what are your complementary colors, what are your triad of colors, what's your four color combinations. And then this side shows you what happens if you use that first color and add a yellow or add a red or add a blue really shows you your options. So if you want to start by looking at this, you can kind of figure out, okay, this is my red in this set, this is my blue, and this is my yellow, and then work your way from there. So this is a nice guideline to have. 
What I'm doing today though is there's 12 colors in this particular palette. So what I'm doing is, this is actually my Dina Wakely Mixed Media Journal. Um, in here it has a really nice cotton, thick watercolor base. So the first thing I did was I took all the wrappers off of my uh, little squares in here. So when you first get your palette, it'll look like this with all the wrappers on top of them. So I took all the wrappers off and I swatched each color all on the side over here. And what I intend to do under here is write out the light fastness and those numbers, the pigment numbers, such as this one is PR101 with PB27 and PY. What that means is the P stands for pigment, pigment, the R stands for red, and it's color 101. The P is for pigment, the B is for blue. P is for pigment, Y is for yellow. So those are the three uh, standard colors according to the standard color chart that professional artists use. Um, and that's how she got the mixture of these particular colors. So um, I'll write all of that information on this page as well as stamp out how many stars for the light fastness. Um, that's really important if you're going to have a piece of art that you're putting on the wall that's not going to be protected or closed inside of a book. For most of us, we're doing them in journal books like this, so light fastness isn't as important, but just be aware that the lower number of stars means the more likely that color is going to fade over time inside of your journal. No matter where you have it, over time, it's just going to decompose just like everything does. Um, so on these two pages what I'm doing is swatching out those colors. So there is no gesso on this page. I'm not using any gesso. This is just going to be straight color. So I'll be using a Faber-Castell pit pen to divide out all my squares. And since there is no gesso on this page this acts like a permanent marker. Even when I add the water to my individual squares, these lines will not smear because this will be permanent since there's no gesso on this paper. So what I've done is I've divided this into six squares, this direct, I'm sorry, 12 squares all the way and six squares down. So that way um, I can swatch out all my colors all the way across. Now I'm going to use my watercolor brush from Jane Davenport and I've used it quite a bit. So there is some staining here that's not actual color, but just to make sure you don't have any color on it, you can drop a couple of water spots, and just make sure it's coming out clear, which mine is. So that's just staining from me using it before, but I don't have a lot of water in it. So I take the center section here and I'll push when I put it into the water bowl, I submerge the tip of that into clean water and then I let go. And I do it again and I let go. And now you'll see my pen has more water in it than before. So I'll keep doing that until my pen is full. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go by the actual list I have on here because that is the order that I have kept all of these watercolors in. So this first one is going to be just the straight color right across the top. Now I'll take my Jane Davenport uh, fountain pen. This one I put in the ink cartridge turquoise. Um, if you want to see more about these particular fountain pens, I'll link, link them with the letter I above. So just click on that and it'll give you the information about these fountain pens. So what I'm going to do is just take the name off of the bottom of this and write them all the way across. <music> So 
the nice thing with this chart is we have the main color going all the way through as a point of reference. We have them on both sides and all the way across. Um, you can add them across the bottom too if you like, but for me this was enough reference to go by. And now I'll start mixing equal portions of these two colors and then equal portions of these two colors. Same here and we'll start filling in the line and see what all of these colors look like mixed with this top color and then we'll continue that way with each of the next ones. So when I look at this, I see I have a red. I really only have one red option in this entire palette. I have one yellow, really only one true yellow in all of this, but I have two blues. So I'm going to make two separate color wheels based off of these two different shades and we'll see what color combinations we get with that. So for the first slice of the pie, I'm going to mix the red and the blue to get a purple right here. So we're going to be mixing to get this middle color. Now to make the red violet, all I'll do is add more red to this mixture to make it more of a red, a true red violet. Now to get our blue violet, we'll just add more blue to it. Now we'll move on to our red and yellow to make orange. So for this last combination on this color wheel, I'm going to use blue and yellow to make green. This one started out a little strong with more blue than yellow, so I think I'm going to go ahead and paint my blue green first and then I'll add a little more yellow to get the true green. Sometimes some of your colors will be more intense and you do equal shading and it doesn't quite come out to that color you were expecting. So now I'll go in and add more yellow. So the benefit of making a color wheel like this is because after you've made all of your swatches in your book, you'll be able to know which colors will look good together or which ones will help pop. So for example, our original color was this shade of red right here, but when we added some yellow, it actually came out to more of a true red. So in your palette, even though your palette has this darker tone of red, by adding yellow, you can get more of a true tone of red. Then this is the blue that I used, and then you can see I was able to get more of an indigo and then over here is a really bright yellow and I was able to get some other shades. So now if you were to make something, your opposite colors or complementary colors would be this red to this green or this blue to this orange or this yellow to this purple. So you could work with mixing these three colors right here as a background and then use these colors as your paint to write your text or to paint your main uh, item. Say you want to do a galaxy. You can do all of these colors right here, these four in a galaxy and then the, these, this color here would make a nice color for your stars or this and this for your stars. 
Say you wanted to do something more green, you can do these greens, yellows, and oranges together. And then your text, you could use a dark indigo blue ink in order for it to show up on your background. So the color wheel helps you be able to kind of see what general family, and then when you look on your swatches, you can see, oh, I also have this yellow I could make, um, and this yellow, let's see what other purples I have. I have a purple here, I have kind of a purplish color there, there. So those are different um, combinations that you could end up using. Or say you want to use like this dark blue color, so you need some oranges to complement that. These um, swatches over here with the metallics are really pretty and that could add a lot of shine to your project. And then you have so many different orange options that you could use with that color blue. So my suggestion for this particular palette is for watercolors, it would be really good for florals because of the number of green and brown shades that you're able to get for nature scenes, uh, for trees, leaves, and then also for flowers because of the reds, the purples, uh, the yellows and oranges that you get. This is also a good palette for say galaxies. Here's a nice galaxy purple as well as this blue. Um, those make some really good galaxy colors um, and then you could splatter in some metallic white if you wanted to against that background. So landscapes, um, ocean, which is what this one's named for, it's called Glitz Sea. Of course, there's all kinds of beautiful greens and blues in this palette. So you can make all kinds of sea foam colors and like she has sea mist, sea nymph, all those different types of colors for ocean, landscapes, and florals. So that's what I recommend for this palette. If I were to add a separate half pan to this palette, I think the only thing I would add is a white, maybe a metallic white, um, because if I mix this Enchantress uh, with, for example, the Water Spirit, since those are both dark shades, I can get almost a black. Same thing over here, Sea Mist with Ariel actually made almost a black. This is kind of a grayish color. This Enchantress with Ariel is almost a, a black to a gray. So I can really get the variations that I need by using uh, the colors in this palette so I don't need to add those basics. I think the only thing I would add to this palette is a white. So I hope that helps you figure out um, how you can use this particular palette if you decide to purchase the Glitz C. Those are the various color options you can get. I'm going to go ahead and paint out the other color wheel and we'll see how that compares since we have two blues inside of this. Okay, so if we put these two color wheels side by side, this is the original red that came in the kit, the original blue, and the original yellow. And you'll see with the different shades of blues, you get lighter shades of greens and you get lighter shades of purples. These are about the same because those are obviously the same colors. But since we used a different shade of blue, you get lighter greens, darker greens, lighter purples, and darker purples. If someone had to choose one palette to start with, I would recommend this one because of the variety of the yellow, the red, and the two blues, which make these wonderful swatches of a variety of colors. Also, this one has Flirtatious, which I didn't like by itself, but it's a metallic, and when mixed with the other colors, gives you a great variety of metallic colors. So I hope this demonstration helps you with your color wheels and swatches and painting. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and also find me on my other social media. I'll link all the products below, and also her links on her website. I'll see you next time.